A concept that made me and the MMT members a lot of profit is order flow. Order flow is my baby. It is my everything. Order flow is what made me fall in love with fair value gaps. And today I want to introduce you to order flow. And if you don't watch out, you will also fall in love with fair value gaps. All right, perfect. In the third video of the MMC series, I want to go over first, finish that market structure topic we talked about in the previous video, then move on to order flow. And you will see as well how closely market structure and order flow are actually related to each other. In the first slide, I want to go over what are the PD rates. So revisiting the first video that we had, we talked about fair value gaps, fair value areas, which we mainly talked about in the previous video, and also swing points. We talked about the daily time frame, how we want to use the daily time frame for those fair value gaps and those swing points. Those are our targets. So let's again mark out those targets. For this video, I want to go over Euro JPY. And I want to mark out the following targets. So again, you will notice that mainly my targets are to the left side of price action. This has a reason and this has to do with order flow, which we're going to touch on later on. Now, focusing on how we deliver towards this swing low right there and also this swing low sitting right there. On again, the daily time frame. Now, moving on to the next slide, we need to discuss then market structure. Because in the previous video, we talked about intermediate term highs, intermediate term lows, which again, like mentioned, discussed in the previous video. So those intermediate term highs, intermediate term lows is not something we will dive into too in depth in this video. We'll revisit them. Yes, but we will move on to short term highs and short term lows right there and how they transfer over to order flow. So to understand that, let's dive into those short term highs and short term lows a little bit deeper. Short term highs and short term lows. This right here in the left side, you will see a short term high. A short term high, very much like an intermediate term high, is simply said a swing high. So it all starts with understanding those swing points. But the difference between the short term high and that intermediate term high is that this short term high does not have those swing highs lower to the left of it and lower to the right of it. And also a huge difference, which is very important to understand, is that that short term high leaves behind a fair value gap right there. So a short term high, swing high followed by an FVG. Those are the short term highs that we want to focus on. Then in a bearish or in a lower trend, short term highs will be protected until we reach an intermediate term low. Now, what that exactly means, what that looks like is what we're going to go over in a little bit. But before we do that, we of course need to understand a short term low as well. The exact same, just inversed. So a swing low right there, followed by an FVG. Short term low does not have to have those swing lows higher to the left of it and higher to the right of it. So a short term low, swing low, followed by an FVG. In a bullish, in a higher trend, a short term low will be protected until we reach an intermediate term high. This all leads back to the following understanding. Price is always moving towards a PD rate. It is our job to find out which PD rate is next. This is all helping us into understanding the direction of price action. Now, before we dive into the chart, I want to go over one more slide right here. The timeframes again. I need your full attention with these slides if I didn't already have that, because this is an extremely important topic and can be extremely confusing if you do not pay attention. So here, swing points. Fair value gaps, we mark them out like we did in the beginning on the daily time frame again. So those swing points, they are our targets. Then we can use short term highs and short term lows on the four hour and the one hour time frame right there. Very similar to what we did in the previous video with intermediate term highs and intermediate term lows also on the same exact time frames. But there's a difference between those and that's what we're going to go over. So let's dive into the chart. So on the daily time frame right here, we are going to be focusing on this low and this low right there as our main targets. Going down one time frame into the four hour time frame right here, we will start to notice that again, we have intermediate term lows and intermediate term highs. I'm going to again mark out those intermediate term highs and intermediate term lows with those blue circles like we did in the previous episode. So there we have intermediate term high, there we have intermediate term low right there. These are the main 
intermediate lows and intermediate highs that we want to focus on. Now, these intermediate highs, intermediate lows, they give us that fair value area. Like we saw in the previous episode, this, for example, is this fair value area. The overall intermediate highs, intermediate lows, they give us the bigger view, the bird's eye view of what market structure wants to do. With short term highs, short term lows, and then moving on to order flow, we are going to dive deeper into how far price can retrace and what we can expect in the next few candles. So we are going to get more accurate. And it starts with those intermediate term highs and those intermediate term lows. Because if we take the first intermediate term high and the first intermediate term low sitting right here, then when we move from an intermediate term high to an intermediate term low, we will see that short term highs will be created on the time frame below. So if we go into the lower time frame and now we focus on the price action from this intermediate term high towards this intermediate term low right there then here on the one hour time frame we can see when this intermediate term high gets created we actually have a short term high at that moment in time because we have this swing high followed by this fair value gap right there this short term high right here follows through and holds what does that mean that means off of that short term high right there we continue lower creating new bearish fair value gaps. But if we dive into even a lower time frame and we focus on the next piece of price action sitting right here, then we will see on the 15 minute time frame from this four hour intermediate term high towards this four hour intermediate term low right there, we again create those short term highs. So this right here is a short term high followed by these fair value gaps right there. We come back into this fair value gap right here. Then afterwards, we create a new swing high sitting right there. That is, again, a new short-term high followed by this new fair value gap right there. Then we retrace back into this fair value gap again right here, and we leave behind a new swing high, creating a new short-term high to continue lower. Then we have one last sting into this fair value gap right there, where we again create a new short-term high to eventually reach the target of the intermediate term low that we have towards the left right there. So what do we see in this movement lower right there towards the intermediate term low? We see that short term highs are holding price. So they do not get traded back above. Those short term highs are getting respected, meaning that we do not trade above those short term highs. We retrace back into those fair value gaps to then continue lower off of it until we reach this intermediate term low right there. Because like we mentioned in the PowerPoint slide, those short-term highs will hold until we reach an intermediate term low. Because right here, this is where it gets messy right now. We have some short-term highs holding, some short-term lows holding. It gets very chaotic. And that is because we have reached a main target in the form of this intermediate term low right there. And whenever we have reached that intermediate term low right there, then we can expect a bigger retracement as well. But before we look at those blue circles right there, let's look at the short term highs actually right here on the 15 minute. These short term highs that we have on the 15 minute, if we go down time frames into the five minute, for example, right here, or into the one minute right here, then what do we notice? That those 15 minute short term highs turn into what? One minute intermediate term highs. And these intermediate term highs on the one minute, if we now again zoom out, then on the 15 minute time frame, those are short term highs. And if we zoom out further, then we go back to the four hour time frame. These intermediate term highs and intermediate term lows that we had on the four hour time frame are what on the daily time frame? A short term high and a short term low right there. Now, I'm going to tell you why that is important to understand. If we move on to the next slide right here, market structure now leads to the understanding of order flow. We understand those intermediate term highs, intermediate term lows, short term lows, short term highs. But short term highs is on another time frame an intermediate term high. And a short term low on another time frame is an intermediate term low. So if we have a short term high on the daily time frame, that's going to be an intermediate term high most likely on the four hour time frame. And the same can be said if we go down time frames even more. So for example, a short term low on the one hour time frame 
could be an intermediate term low on the 15 minute time frame. It is all fractal and we're working towards a fractal understanding of the market. Arguably one of the most important parts in trading is understanding how those time frames show the same exact thing just on different time frames. And that is what we're working towards here. Because now this daily time frame, for example, has a short term high right there. This on the four hour time frame is an intermediate term high right there. Now, why am I telling you this and why does it feel like I'm trying to confuse you? Well, the thing that I'm trying to prepare you for is the following. This is so we don't get lost in the lower time frames later on. So when we learn how to navigate those different short term highs, intermediate term highs on different time frames, then this in the beginning might be a little bit confusing, but it will be a lot more confusing if we don't understand this when we dive into the lower time frames. So if you understand that those short term highs and intermediate term highs are essentially the same, intermediate term highs are short term highs, short term highs are intermediate term highs, then you understand this and that's perfect. Then we can move on. Now, moving on, we now dive into order flow because those short term highs and short term lows that we just talked about where swing high needs to be followed by a fair value gap. That is market structure, yes. But if we now dive deeper into that and we can actually dissect it. So again, like I mentioned, market structure is the bird's eye view. Order flow is the more accurate representation of what is happening at this moment in time. Then that short term high followed by a fair value gap is an order flow lag. So what does that mean? Let's dissect that order flow lag. Breaking down an order flow lag, it has all three e rays It has number one, a swing point right there. So at the top, we see a swing point and that is what makes it a lag. So when I refer to a lag, a lag in price action is when we have a swing high followed by a fair value gap or swing low followed by a fair value gap. Then it would be a bullish lag. This is a bearish order flow lag. And after that swing point, we want also a fair value gap right there. So we see the order flow lag also has a fair value gap, but an order flow lag has one more PD ray. And that is, of course, the fair value area, because the retracement that we had up right there is what we talked about in the previous video. That is that offering of the fair value to then continue lower, leaving behind that fair value area. Now, why is that a fair value area? Because didn't we just mention in the previous video that a fair value area is from an intermediate term low towards an intermediate term high and vice versa? Well, what did we just talk about in the previous slide? An intermediate term high is the same as a short term high. Intermediate term low is the same as a short term low. So this is a fractal understanding of a fair value area. Now, this is where it gets, in my opinion, even more interesting because I'm just very passionate about it. Right here, order flow then tells us the intention of price. But let's work that back because we mentioned in the first video that fair value gaps are superior. Why? Because you don't have an order flow lag if you don't have a fair value gap. You don't have a fair value area then if you don't have a fair value gap. So order flow tells you the intention of price. Yes, but fair value gaps tell you the intention of price. We see the intention of price is again order flow, but those fair value gaps, they are superior for a reason. They are the most important. And it's beautiful because this is exactly how I got to understand fair value gaps, how I fell in love with fair value gaps, because then I understood, hey, it's all about fair value gaps. So here, no fair value gap is no order flow lag. No fair value gap is no fair value area. Here we see a lag where we only have that swing point at the high right there. We don't have a fair value gap, meaning that we don't have that order flow lag and we also don't have that fair value area. So in order for it to be an orphan lag again, we need a fair value gap. And in order for us to need a fair value area, we need a fair value gap as well. And that is talking about those short term highs and short term lows. Now, we want to start off with understanding the daily time frame, because this in itself is a lot of information and it's quite advanced. If you can understand this, you are doing an amazing job. But we first want to understand the daily time frame before we apply it to any other time frame. So looking at order flow through the lens of the daily time frame. So then coming back to Euro JPY right here, where we left off these blue circles were on the four hour time frame, those intermediate term highs and intermediate term lows. 
then on the 15 minute time frame right there we understood that here these are short-term highs but these are not only short-term highs these are now order flow lags that we can continue lower off of these order flow lags tell us the intention of price and what i mean with the intention of price is the intention is where price truly wants to go towards so if price wants to continue higher wants to be bullish it will be told by order flow lags if price wants to continue lower it will also be told by bearish order flow lags so if we again zoom out to the daily time frame because what do we then have on the daily time frame well what does it look like we have a perfect order flow lag where we have the swing high right there the swing point number one perfect we have one more candle in the making right there and now we have a fair value gap sitting right there and we also have the fair value area sitting right here so we have all three pd rays and that is simply because we have a fair value gap going lower with that short term high so on the daily time frame we can now understand that if we want to continue lower right here and reach for this swing low and this swing low then we will not trade back above this high right there because that is the high of the order flow lag this then tells us the intention of price right here where we sting into it into the fair value gap and we can continue lower towards those targets so we're looking at those daily targets and those daily order flow lags and if we even dive into it a little bit deeper then here we have this fair value gap right there what gets created at that daily fair value gap a four hour intermediate term high right there what gets created right here if we go into the one hour time frame one hour short term highs right here and right here and which highs do not get taken out it is consistently the short term highs that are protected right there and we continue lower but what about again this order flow lag for example right here that we have that we can continue lower off of what's important to understand that we previously right here towards the left we talked about this intermediate term low getting taken right there so we can expect a bigger retracement but that bigger retracement happens because on the time frame above us there is a new order flow lag so if we zoom out the reason why we create the retracement is because we are retracing back into the fair value gap of a daily order flow lag right there and this is what we're going to build onto because the higher the time frame the more important the time frame so the daily time frame right here is stronger than the one hour time frame and if we go up time frames more then the higher we go the stronger the time frame so here what can we safely assume that we are not going to take out this high that swing high that we have right there before we might take out this low now this fair value gap is not confirmed yet meaning the order flow lag in itself is not confirmed just yet but if we create that fair value gap right here then we can safely assume that we have a good understanding of the direction because we are most likely going to take out this low first before we trade back towards that high so to give you a few examples and to build towards the next video which is candle signs then right here we see order flow on us dollar canadian dollar on the daily time frame again we have this daily value gap which we try to continue lower off of we don't create a new order flow lag going lower then afterwards we do create a new bullish order flow lag right there and this bullish order flow lag is then what we can continue higher off of after that we create again a new bullish order flow lag which will be created in about two hours that is what we again can continue higher off of then towards these highs then right here on nasdaq we see the following that we have this order flow lag going higher right there every lag every order flow lag which has a fair value gap in it has a higher probability of holding that is why this works because those fair value gaps they tell you the intention they are the footprints of the bigger will in the market they are going to tell you it's going to continue higher and that is told through those fair value gaps they can't hide the orders which is why it's called order flow and you see every low of the lag that has a fair value gap in it right there is not getting taken out until we reach this order flow lag right there and that might be an indication that order flow is then again switching 
with this bearish order flow lag right there. So again, for your own sake, start doing case studies and you will get to the same conclusion what I'm telling you right here. The following case study, study order flow lags on the daily time frame and see how they tell you the intention of price. See how they tell you the direction that price wants to move in. Everything I do in the MMT is based off of order flow. So it's an extremely important concept to understand. All right, perfect. Thank you.